All right, good morning. Good to see each of you as we continue in our series in Jonah. But before we get into Jonah, I would like to uh, do a little bit of housekeeping, a couple of little announcements we have. First of all, we have our annual board bees, biz, sorry, annual business meeting coming up on February 6th, just a couple weeks away. Um, don't worry, that's not Super Bowl Sunday. Traditionally, Super Bowl Sunday has been the first Sunday of the month, but they've moved it back a week, so we're, we're flipping with the Super Bowl um, this year. We're going to move up to the first week, and then they'll have the second week. Um, made sure the NFL commissioner um, passed off on that, um, but we're, we're all good. Uh, so anyways, just keep that in mind. It's going to be like last year, doing a little bit different during this season. Uh, our service is going to act as the business meeting. We'll have a normal service. My message will be the morning message as well as the devotion, and then we'll go right into business. We don't have a whole lot to do to cover, so it shouldn't be a, for long, a forever long meeting. But we encourage you to be here, especially if you're an official uh, member of the church. <clears throat> uh, if you're uh, not an official voting member, we would love for you to be here, participate. Uh, hear the report of what happened last year and what's going on. We have some good stuff to report uh, in a time that's been very difficult. <clears throat> Obviously, our numbers have been down, but finances are, are, have been really good. God's been faithful, and we want to celebrate that, and we'll get to talk about that and look at it in a little bit more detail of what, what's gone on in the last year. So we will um, be doing that. So that's your first official notice of that. And then the second uh, announcement is Wednesday night. We are going to start back up Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different as well this, this next several weeks. We're going to meet back in here, and we're going to uh, have a more of a short devotion, and then we're going to spend time praying together. Uh, praying is just one of the most important things we can do as individuals, but also as a church body. And it's been a while since we just had kind of prayer-type meetings together uh, and just met together to pray um, it, it, I don't know exactly what it is. Some of it might be guided. Some of it might be just, let's just be here together praying. But I'm going to do a little bit of teaching on praying before we do that. If um, you're going, you know, I don't really know how to pray. I don't like to pray. I want to encourage you to be here for that time. Because first, I'm going to kind of try to teach a little bit about how, praying, why we pray, and how to pray. But there's something with praying with other people, and especially as others will lead in prayer and pray out loud. You hear them pray. And you, you kind of hear a model of prayer, and, and, and you can learn from others and how to pray. And um, I, I know that was a valuable experience for me when I was a youth. My youth pastor um, had me come down to his office when, when I felt called into ministry, and at that time specifically youth ministry. And he would say, come, come to my office. And, and every Tuesday I'd come to his office and, and help him and do stuff. And he was teaching ministry. But part of it, he always said, let's go to the prayer chapel and pray. Uh, that was a valuable experience to be around others and pray and stuff. So I encourage you, if you're like, you know, I'd like to pray, but I don't really know how. And I get, come and let's learn from each other and pray for one another. And, and uh, I think it'll be a good time. So we're going to jump back into the book of Jonah now. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Jonah chapter 2. That's when we're going we're gonna to read that full chapter just in, a, just in a second. But as you're turning, just quickly... Last week, what we talked about was Jonah running, right? That was the message title, Jonah Runs. Jonah had a call from God. God spoke to him, was calling him to do something, to act a certain way, to do a certain thing. And that was to go to Nineveh and tell the Ninevehites, hey, you guys are blowing it. And if you don't straighten up, you're going to die, right? It's going to be bad for you, basically, uh, in a nutshell. And Jonah says, I don't like those people. They don't deserve it. They're so horrible. They don't deserve your love, grace. So I'm going to completely run the other direction. And we found out as he ran from God, things got worse for him. The and not just for him, it got worse for everyone around him. All the, the, the sailors on the ship were scared for their life because the storm that God sent to get Jonah's, Jonah's attention impacted them. And eventually he says, throw me off and it'll be okay. And, and that's where our story ended last week. We talked about, and, and that we, we, then we talked about, we, we don't want to run from God. Whether we, if we don't know Him, and he's, he's knocking on our door, and He wants to be part of our life, and He wants us to, to change, we don't want to run from Him. Because He'll keep knocking on your door, and sometimes His knocks cause storms. And then secondly, if we are already embraced Him and following Him, like Jonah was, 
Sometimes he's going to ask us to do some things. Change behavior, act different, do something different, do something for someone, tell someone about him, spread his, whatever it might be. Teach a Sunday school class, get involved in worship, whatever it is. And we go, oh, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's, uh, I don't have time. And we come up with excuses and, and we're running from God. Even though we are in relationship with him, we can still run from him. And that's not what he wants. He wants all of us. And so that's what happened. And for Jonah, though the storm goes away, uh, life does not get better for Jonah. Jonah finds himself in the belly of a well. And we talked about that well and some of the theories about the well last week, uh, which is, is, does not matter to the story what the well was. What matters to the story is what was going on in Jonah's life that got him there. Uh, but if you're interested in some of the thoughts on the well and, and what I have come to believe the well was, uh, you can watch it on YouTube from last week's message. Um, with that, let's read chapter 1. So now Jonah's in that well, right? From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deeps surround me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But with a song of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah, Jonah onto the dry land. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come and we ask that you would speak to us this morning as we read the story, as we talk a little bit about this story, uh, how it applies to us, and some lessons we can learn from Jonah's life. Um, we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. So, I want to pick up a few little lessons of, of Jonah here uh, in this text this morning. First of all, we learn that Jonah calls out in his distress, or if you read the New Living Translation, in his time of troubles. And we all go through times of troubles. You cannot avoid it. They happen. There are two types of distress or two types of trouble uh, that I believe are there. There are, one, distress troubles that you bring on your own self. Our own decisions, our own choices, the things that we do like that can bring on troubles. Right? We've, we've all done that. We've all made a bad choice somewhere at some point that just, we look back and went, man, that was not good. Didn't have a good result. And, and we suffer the consequences of those choices. And those, those happen. And then there are the other type of troubles that just come from life circumstances. They just come from being a human being. They just come from living. You can't avoid them. Things happen. Natural disasters happen. Right? We've seen quite a few of those with tornadoes in the weird time of years and uh, year this past December and just different things happening. Uh, that they're out of our control. Or maybe choices that someone close to you made that impacts you. Right? They're bad choices, but it wasn't that you did. It's just the circumstances of life around you. So we cannot avoid those. Now, we can do our best to avoid the ones we cause and really limit those, but we can't avoid nature. We can't avoid other people's around us decisions. Right? Like for instance, you go through the light green, but some clown doesn't stop when it's red and they hit you. You did nothing wrong, but you can't avoid the consequences of the accident. Those things happen in life. And so that's, that's where we, we find Jonah, and that's where we will find ourselves. If you're not there right now, you will at some point. So what can we learn from this? One I want to say is call out to God. Right? We call out in our times of trouble. 
but not just in our time of trouble. I want to encourage us this morning that we are praying as we're going to start our prayer meeting on Wednesday, that we are regularly praying when things are good, when things are just okay. That we're already in that habit of calling out to God. That we don't just wait for that moment of, of tragedy to say, oh God, I need your help. Oh God, can you give me that? Can you do this? Can you do that? But that we're already in a communication. We're already regularly talking and meeting with Him. Some examples of, of this in Psalms 5, verse 3. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and I wait in expectancy. So this idea, the psalmist is saying, in the morning, I, I'm talking to God in the morning. When we get up, that we're, we're talking to God. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that every morning you've got to get up and spend an hour on your knees every morning. I'm not saying that as, as we talk about different times throughout the day, that every evening, or just, but I think that we are, are talking to Him. We're communicating to Him. We're, we're in that, that conversation as we're getting ready for work. And it's like, now, and it's important that we find times to hit our knees or, or our chair or that quiet spot, however is comfortable for you. We, we talked about ways of worshiping uh, not long ago, all these different postures, but that also applies to time of prayer. Uh, there's not a secret thing about being on your knees, uh, but it's all not a bad thing to do. But that we're regular, that each morning we check in, hey, thanks for giving me another day, Lord. Help me through this day. Guide me through this day. Help me make those right choices this day. But that we're regularly talking to him. Um, in uh, Daniel 6, 10 through 11. Now when Daniel learned that the decrees had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So this is a time that, that Daniel is in distress, right? They made a decree, you've got to bow down to this thing, you've got to honor the king, you get whatever, um, or get thrown to the lions. And Daniel's like, you know what? I prayed three times a day before that. I'm going to continue to pray three times a day. He was already calling out to God. He already had that relationship. He already had his communication line intact. And then a third example from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Verse 17, pray continually. That's the, that's the big one. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, hey, we need to live life with joyfulness. We need to be life talking with God continually. And if Paul is going to instruct us to, to pray continually, he obviously can't mean you need to continually be on your knees. Because that wouldn't be productive. He also talks about making sure you're working with your hands and not being idle. Well, how does that go? Because we can be a prayerful attitude. We can have God in our mind as we're going through our activities, as we're doing housework, as we're doing homework, as we're doing work for our employer. We have these different things. We, we are continually in communication with God in the good and in the bad, in all circumstances. We're continually talking to God. I was listening to a, a guy talk the other day, and he, he was talking about journaling. And this wasn't a spiritual person or a spiritual action, although a lot of people like to spirit, spirit, write down their prayers and journal and this and that. Throughout my Bible college days, professor after professor would have us. We would have to journal as part of the class, and I would do it for them. I'm not a journaler. But this particular individual was talking about journaling, and he, he said, I realized at one point, whenever I journaled, I only journaled in the bad times. I didn't, I didn't just journal in the good days. And, and so he said, I realized at that point, I should journal in the good days, so in the bad days, I can go back and, and read what life was like, how was, what I'm behaving, what were the choices I was making when things were going good. It, it could help me out of the bad. So I'm going to journal in all times. And I think there's a similar connection. If we're, if we're praying to God, if we're talking to Him, if we're already connecting with Him, it just gets easier to pray, to talk to Him. Because um, uh, we're already in that communication with Him. And, be, and another good thing about it, if He might help us avoid some of those bad circumstances, because in the prayer time, He may warn us 
you need to go right here, not left, you know, type of thing. So that's the first thing we should uh, learn from this. That Jonah called out, we should call out. The second thing is, when he calls out, he calls for help. Um, Jonah wants God to rescue him. So he calls for help. But Jonah didn't realize it. The great fish was his rescue plan. He probably wished that the storm had calmed when they threw him off. Maybe he was even hoping that. They'll throw me off, the storm will calm, and, and then uh, maybe that sacrifice, that willingness, they can bring me back in. Uh, maybe he thought, or they can go off and I'll tread water for a little bit and another ship will come by and I can get on that. Or, or maybe he thought the storm will calm down and maybe we're pretty close to land. We just can't tell because of the waves and the, and the clouds and, and I can swim there and, and, and maybe God can rescue me. Because that's what we do, right? When we want to be rescued from something, we, we think of, of uh, the ways that he could do it, that we would want him to do it. But then all of a sudden... Um, Uh, a fish swallows him. Well, when you're on the water, in the water, swimming, you have hope. But if a great fish or a well or whatever it is swallows you, in my mind, hope is over. I've only, I can only think of one way that people come out of a fish, and it's, it's not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy. And so that's where Jonah finds himself. He probably can't imagine, how can I survive this? But he still calls out for help. And he was rescued. That, that what in his mind, would have been doom. The end of his life was God's rescue plan. Because that well, that, fit, that great fish, is heading to Nineveh. It's heading towards the shore. It's going to spit him up, as we already read, onto the shore. It is getting him from the storm. It's getting him from the sea. God is rescuing him. And, and he didn't probably really like that rescue plan in the moment. And so one of the lessons we can learn is is cry for help, but when things are bad, they can get worse. They might get worse before they get better. And that's okay, because God's working. He's a way maker. We don't understand the way maker's ways sometimes, but he's doing stuff. I don't understand the way they put things together. And I can sit there and watch them build something and, and, and not even see what it's going to be, but by the time they're done, it's a beautiful whatever they've created. And sometimes God's taking these parts and these things, and he's doing And so in the midst of that, we cry out for help, and we need to um, receive his help. Uh, there was this, this, this guy walking. His name was Jack. And he's going for a walk along the, the mountains, and he slips and he falls off a cliff. And as he's, he's falling to his death, he, he reaches out, and there's a branch sticking out of the side of the mountain. He grabs a hold of it. All right? And as he's holding on for dear life, he starts crying for help. And there's no one around, and so he starts evaluating, what, can I climb up the hill? No, it's just a steep cliff, and he's not a mountain climber. He looks down, and it's still way too far to drop. Um, and, and he starts yelling more for help, and there's no one around. No one's coming. No one's coming with a rope. No one's coming with a helicopter dropping the ladder. Nothing's ha happening for him. So finally he starts praying, God, if you'll rescue me, you send something, you do something, I will serve you, I'll do whatever you want, I will follow you the rest of my life. And then all of a sudden he hears from somewhere, Jack? He goes, yes. He goes, you mean that? He goes, yeah. I'll, I'll serve you, Lord. He goes, okay, well then let go. And Jack sits there and listens and thinks, and he goes, let, let go. And he looks down, and he looks up, and he yells, is there anyone else out there that can help me? 
Sometimes that's what it feels like. The right time feels like, or the right thing sometimes feels like the wrong thing. Or it just feels difficult. It feels dangerous. And so we need to call out for help, but also recognize when that help comes, it may not be the way we want to be helped. But trust the Lord anyway. Verse 4, we see that Jonah repents in his call. When he's calling out, he repents. He recognizes his disobedience had brought him into to the situation that he was at. And he recognizes that he needs to refocus on the things of God. Verse 4 says, I said I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. You know, even in that passage we read about Daniel, Daniel uh, was, was in exile at the time in Babylon, and he goes and he opens up the windows uh, towards Jerusalem. Because he's, he's facing the temple. He's facing God. He's looking to God. The temple is the place where God's glory is. This is where God's... So he's, he's facing that direction. And so Jonah's doing this. He's wanting to face towards the temple. He's wanting to face that direction. He's facing God. He's, he's, he's saying, I'm going to put my eyes back on you. I'm going to turn back to you. He's refocusing to the point of, I will be, I'm going to be obedient. And at this point, it might just be in his obedience of saying, I'm sorry. Right? Which is what we're talking about here. I'm sorry. I'm in my death. It's over. But I'm going to turn myself to you. I'm sorry about those bad choices. I'm sorry I've turned my back against the Ninevites. And I'm sorry I didn't do what you said. And he's changing. We need to refocus at times, too. Especially if it's troubles that we've caused ourselves. We need to pause. We need to do whatever it takes to get refocused, uh, recollaborate, get our minds back on God. We need to do what we do with our computers. When our, you know, our computers just start doing stupid stuff and doesn't work, what do we do? We shut them off and, and reboot them. Sometimes we need to, to, to shut down from everything else we're doing and just focus on God and get recharge, reconnect it. That's why going on retreats and to camps and things like that can be so great for us because you kind of break away from your regular routine and you, you focus on God and, and you get that, that mountain experience of, of whatever. And it's not that you went to the mountain or to, to camp. It's the fact that I think you've rebooted, you've refocused. And that's just a good thing to do, not just in the midst of bad times. But we need to be regularly rebooting ourselves, thinking and praying and, and reading his word and studying and, and evaluating where we're at, the choices we're making, the, the things that we're doing, and whatever. And just, is this the right direction? Am I headed right? Am I, I need to reboot and make sure I'm lined up with God. So I will encourage us that we would find that place to, it's not always repenting, it's just sometimes just reconnecting. You know, we, can, we get that same way with our friends, our spouses, maybe even with our own kids, where we're just not connecting the way we normally do. And what you got to do really is just put things aside, sit down and talk, go on a date night, uh, go on a uh, daddy-daughter or dad-son hangout day and, and just reconnect or just, hey, get together with your buddies and, and go um, do something that's whatever. And, you re- and then things kind of reconnect. But we can, just, we can get out of sync with one another. And our relationship with God is the same way. And we just need to do the things that can help us reconnect and reboot um, with God. Next is Jonah commits to sacrifice in 8 and 9. I'm going to read those verses again. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. Um, I'm going to change that a little bit. Those who cling to their own selfish desires. Those who cling to doing things their own way. Things that, that when we, we do that, we begin to forfeit the grace. God's free gift to us of love and mercy, His forgiveness of our sins can be taken away here, be forfeited. We, we, we for, forfeit doesn't mean taken away, right? Forfeit means we give up. I give it back to you. 
That's what happens in sports. If you forfeit a game, it's because we've decided we can't win, we're not going to win, we don't have enough players, so we're not going to play. You get to have the victory. And that's what, when we cling to worthless idols, when we cling to worthless things, when we cling to the things that don't really matter in life, we're forfeiting possibly something better. I've told this story several times. But I'm going to share it again because it just fits. There's this little girl. She's, she's at the grocery store with her mom, and they go by the little toy section. They don't even have toy sections in grocery stores anymore. I remember when I was a kid. But she found this little plastic pearl necklace, and she loved this pearl necklace. And, and she wore it, and she would wear it all the time. All the time she would wear it. And then when she got a little older, her dad decided, you know what, I'm going to buy her real pearls. And so he buys her real pearls, and he has them in their little jewel bag, and he has them in his pocket. And each night he would go and talk with her, read her story, and say their goodnight prayers. And then once he got these pearls, at the end of that time each evening, he would ask her, can I have your necklace? Oh, no, Daddy, I love my necklace. It's my favorite thing, Daddy. If you, you can have anything else, but not my necklace. He goes, okay. And so he would leave. And this goes on for several nights. And then finally, one evening, she says, okay, Daddy, you really, I'll give it to you. And she takes it off and gives it to him. And once she gives it to him, he reaches down in his pocket and he pulls out the rural pearls and he puts them on her neck. See, the whole time that she was focusing and holding on the imitation, she was forfeiting having the real thing. And we do that with God sometimes. He's offering his love, his grace. He's, he's asking us to live and repent and turn and live our life differently, which is always for our own benefit. But he wants us to live differently. He wants us to do differently. He wants us to sh- do things that stretches us, that challenges us. He wants us to share with other people. He wants to, us to do these things that scares us and makes us want to run like Jonah, maybe for different reasons. We want to run and tuck back in. And, and we're forfeiting maybe some of the wonderful blessings that comes with those obedience. And so this morning, what can we sacrifice? What do we hold on to? What are the things that just aren't quite right in our life that maybe they're not real bad things, maybe they're just gray area things, but would just be better to let go of? Maybe they're real bad things. Maybe they're just, it's not necessarily Don't get rid of this, but do less time of this and more time of this. Budgeting our time better so we have more time for God. So we have more time to call out regularly. It's it's budgeting things. Budgeting our time. We get so busy. I'll tell you one thing. I, I didn't realize how busy life was until I had two weeks of not doing anything. Well, as you know, it turned into months of not doing anything. In 2020, man, when we, and then when we started coming back and there started being sports again and this and taking kids to school and dropping kids back at school and going to games and going to practice, I went, wow, I didn't realize how just busy, good stuff. I wouldn't change any of this. I love doing this. I love being at my kids' practices when I can be there and going to their games and being part of that. And co- I, I love doing that. But then I was like, wow, I didn't realize how busy we were. But as long as we're, and that's okay, as long as we're managing it well and we're not squeezing out God, we're not forfeiting things that God wants us to do. And then finally, let's look at God's response. Verse 10. God has the fish spit Jonah onto the, to the beach. Jonah's life was spared, but his work's not done. You know, I, I imagine he needed a bath. I'm just guessing. Probably needed it. We've all been there. We've, we've, it's not pretty what comes out of our mouths. I'm assuming he needs a bath. But not only that, he's got work to do. He's repented. He's sacri- saying he's going to sacrifice. He's, he's basically saying, I'll do what you want me to do. Now, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, we're going to look, start looking at it in the next two weeks. He's going to do what he was asked to do, but he still kind of does it regret, like not wanting to. 
and that's, that's a message ahead of time. But, but there's still things to do. So when we call out and God rest you and we start coming out, we also have to help ourselves. There are things that, that we can do and we need to do those things and there's still things that only God can do and we've got to let God do those while, to get us out of the storm. So what can we do? We need to look for the things that we can do and identify that and then commit to continuing to following his commands and his direction and, and doing that. Um, when God rescues us, we'll have work to do. We'll have some stuff. And, and my favorite illustration of this is probably Teen Challenge. We, we try to have Teen Challenge here every year. Incredible stories of what God has done in these men and ladies' lives who had drugs and alcohol addictions. But remember, they're in a year-long program. And they're doing hard work. And they're doing the things they have to do and in the meantime, God is also working on the other side, doing what they can't do. But man, what an impact Teen Challenge has on us. And, and it's God through Teen Challenge, right? The best program as far as five years after graduating Teen Challenge to still be sober. Uh, and it's a free program. Incredible what God does through Teen Challenge. But those men, those ladies also work. They don't just go, oh, I joined Teen Challenge and God cleaned me. No, it doesn't work that way. They, they work hard, they support each other, they encourage each other, they pray for each other, they challenge each other, and they move forward. So with that, this morning, I want to encourage us all just to think through where you're at, your journey, your life, and, and, and where are you? Maybe you're not in a time of trouble. But I want to give you the same challenge. Call out to God regularly. We need to be talking to Him. We need to be communicating to Him. We need to be seeking Him in His direction, in His guidance, in all that we do. And it won't always be easy, and there will be some hard work. If you're in the midst of trouble, and it's been troubled, it just won't go away, and you've called out to Him, but it just still isn't going away, and it's, just, it's an ongoing battle, I encourage you to don't stop. Keep going. Jonah was in that belly for three days which is not long compared to what some of us face challenges. But keep going. Keep going. Repent of stuff you need to repent of and commit to where you need the things you need to commit, the things that God's asking you. And that's different for each of us. And then a final thought this morning, if there's anybody here this morning who just like, you know, You've been talking about this relationship and talking to God, and I don't really have that. I want to encourage you to call out to God to start that, because that's all it takes. As we read through his word, Jesus himself said for, that um, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So whoever believes... It's, it's believing and it's letting him know, telling him, God, I believe you. I believe you sent your son. I believe in that. I don't understand it all. That's okay. I haven't got it all together. That's okay. I'm not perfect. That's okay. Neither were none of us. But I want to start this journey. I want to walk with you. I want to learn about this. I want to learn about this way maker, this God that loves that much. And, and I want to start. So just call out in your own heart as I say a closing prayer this morning, praying and asking him into your life. And then I want you to let someone know. You can come and talk to me afterwards, someone that you, you came with or maybe someone you've met this morning. Let someone know, you know, I'm starting this journey and I'm not sure. Well, I want to encourage you to come talk to so we can then be that support system and encourage you and show you the next steps and walk with you coach you or mentor you and uh, parent you, whatever word you want to use there. And then be back on Wednesday at 7 o'clock as we meet in here and, and start learning about what it means to pray with God and, and join us in prayer. Um, I, I think you'll be thrilled of the blessings and the benefits and all that comes with, with learning to follow the Lord. Let's pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the examples we can learn from uh, people like Jonah, people who messed up. That's what I love about your, your word. Um, we don't just hear the good, heroic stories. We get to hear about the failures, uh, that your prophets who, who disobey and run. Um, and, and not just Jonah, but it, it, we see it over and over. But we also see them, in a lot of cases, repent uh, and be restored. And, and you don't just write them off. Uh, and we have a tendency to just write people off who blow it, who, who treat us the way we didn't want to be treated. And that's not you. And we thank you for that. And so this morning, Lord, we come and we call out wherever we are in life. We just call out that you would speak to us, that your spirit would fall upon us. We would feel you and lead us and guide us in all that we do uh, this week. For those who maybe are just praying for that first time, Lord, be with them, comfort them, let them feel your spirit enter into their life and, and to take those steps and to be part of that journey. And we just thank you for all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Hope to see you back here on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock.